Hi BD friends, we're back with the second tutorial. Again, this time we will be um, learning a different stitch for the bead technique, bead weaving with Miyuki beads. We will learn the brick stitch stitch and we will use Jellica beads size 11. We will make the earrings that you've seen, these circular earrings, which are very cute. We have size four inches of rings or you can make the smaller size which is a two inch ring so you will need two rings of the same size three colors of delica beads size 11 and then our usual size 10 needles bead needles and then for this project again i've used fireline size 4lb the width is 0 0.005 inches, so the thinnest one available, because we will be passing through the beads various times and we have to make sure that we won't break any beads. So use this thread absolutely. Again, with our project, tension is very important, so remember to just pull on your thread and to make your work nice and tight. The tighter the work, the nicer your finished earring will be. And I've used for colors, you can see that in this size, in these colors, I've used opaque colors like blue, white, and black, which are classic, and they kind of become a little bit more ethnic. Whereas if you start using metal beads and you add a little sparkle to it, it becomes a bit more elegant. Like in this case where I used a pink, a dark brown, which unfortunately doesn't show up on the screen, and a dark a light, sorry light gold almost champagne like i love this color and then i tried out the new duracoat colors that we have on our site and i just love their finish that it's opaque but shiny and these are three of the colors i'll put you the db codes after in the comments as usual you'll find in the description of the tutorial all the materials so no need to jot it down or panic because you can't find what we need you just find it in the description below so let's get to it Count, uh, cut about a foot and a half of thread and needle and thread your needle on your thread. Okay, so we have to start out with the first first color bead next to our ring. In this case, since I'll be making the second earring for this pair, I'll be using black beads. Again, it's Delica Miyuki size 11. And because the beads are so small, I actually use these Hama beads, which are plastic beads, they're not Miyuki, but because they're much bigger and they have the same shape as your Delica beads, I love them to show out and help out people when they don't understand something in classes because since they're bigger, it's just like looking under a magnifying lens. It helps you out seeing the bigger picture. So I'll use a bigger thread to show you the first few steps, then I'll pass to my Delica beads. You have to thread one of the bigger beads on your thread and then I'll show you here on this ring because I don't have an extra one but you go through from the outside of your ring pass under and out from your ring leaving the bead out on the outside of your ring pass through so you see how the bead is on the external side of your ring and then I'll go over back through the bead and you see how the, the thread is actually making a ring around your base. And so you'll have both threads, both the tail thread and the working thread passing from the, coming out from the same side of the bead. And the bead has to remain on the outside of your ring. So to put, and you have to go on like this to add the base, like I've done here with the Delica beads. So keep your tail thread nice and tight, keep the, three, the bead in between your fingers, and with the other hand, thread a second bead on your needle, add it to the outside of your ring, pass through, pull, nice and tightly. Now the bead has to remain on the external part of the ring. Pass back through the bead, And pull tightly and you see how my beads have actually gone one against the other 
like that. And you have to continue until you add a total of 30 beads, naturally your Delica beads. Okay, so we've placed 30 Delica beads around our ring. As you can see, I have the chill thread on one side and on my working thread on the other because I've been going around. All my beads are nice tightly next to each other so that you can't find any space around it. And as you can see, I've started more or less one inch from the beginning of the half an inch, more than an inch, half an inch from the end of my ring, gone around and I've left another half an inch at the end. This is because my 30 beads will not be closing and covering the whole of the ring. So you have to make sure to start more or less here and once you're done, if your beads are higher on one side than the other, then move them around so that they match more or less each height so that your ring ends up like in the sample. Okay, now we're ready to start with the second row which is white so I have to switch out my beads. Here we are, so we've finished our first thread, I've taken out my white beads, but before I can place them on top and make the second row, I actually have to move around because my second row is in decreasing mode. So you see that the first white bead is actually under the first and second and not over here. So we have to move to the second black bead of the base to be able to do this. So how do I do it? Thread is coming out from the first bead. I go through the second with my needle that goes towards on top of the ring and towards the inside of the ring. Pull through, go through the ring, turn over my ring so that my thread is going around the ring and through the second bead again from the inside of the ring towards the outside and this way I've simply moved from one bead to the other. It's kind of like adding a bead like before so the movement is the same and now I'll add two white beads. Having moved around I'm now increasing my row actually so I have to add two beads to begin the row and then I'll go and get the third the second thread between the second and third bead like this so you see that my thread is passing under the bridge thread bridge between the second and third bead pull through my beads are kind of already in place but I actually have to pass through and you see I like I have two beads so which one should I go through you go with the one that's towards the center of your ring so the second one actually again from the inside of the ring towards the outside And this way I've added the first two. Now you'll continue adding one bead at a time in this case. So take one bead, pass through the next bridge, it will be between the third and fourth bead. And here I go, I've added a third one, nice and tight, pull through, tension is important as always. Going through the next bridge, picked up a bead, passed through <clears throat> the last bead added. And so on like this. So you'll add more or less 30 beads, maybe more. I'll join you in a bit. Okay, so I went on and added my white beads. As you can see, I've added more or less 20. And now I'm at the lower end of my circle where the curve happens because this is the flat side and then it curves here and then I've curved over here. And you, as you can see, I've put one bead for each thread between the beads, but right now, I've gotten to the point where, as you can see from here, my bead is almost, it's not over the bridge, but it's slightly behind the bridge to which I've attached it. So it's not corresponding anymore with the bridge of the thread. Here, an extra bead would be ideal to not have too much space. So I'll add a double bead. How will I do it? Again, a white bead. 
and simply instead of passing through in the next bridge i'll pass in the same bridge where i added the last bead of this row so i'll pass again here still passing through only the thread under pull bead goes next to the last one pass through the bottom of the bead towards the outside of the circle pull and if i've done a good job with my calculations the beads will be going one and next to each other and I will still have the space available to add the bead next to the bridge that's, that's remained empty. Okay, so I'll add, so I've added two beads to this bridge and then I'll add one bead here. I'll show you. If my calculations were wrong, the bead that I've just added would be covering or wouldn't lay flat, but would be placed half over the last bead. And in that case, I'd have to undo my work, add a few more beads regularly, and then try again for a double bead further on in the work. But that's not necessary in this case. So you see how the double bead just fits perfectly and fills up a bit more of the spaces between the beads. Why is this done? It's done because our base has a certain measurement. And as we add rows to the X side, to the external side of the ring, the space needed for the external is wider then the space that has been covering the beads with the black and because the bridges are the same number of bridges that is the beads of the base i have 30 bridges so in theory i should add 30 beads but because the space is actually bigger than the 30 beads can cover i'll have to add a few doubles to be able to overcome this obstacle let's say so i'll need more beads to cover this bigger space so I'll have to add, I usually add two doubles, so one here usually where the curve starts happening, and then as I've added over here, the second one. In this case, I've only added it here, probably I've worked with less tension in this case, but in my first earring, I actually always added, added two doubles, so one here and one there. Mm -hmm. So you'll add probably 32 beads instead of 30. So I'll finish up the ring. Here, we finished the second row. As you can see, the other side is again in decrease. So we've got two beautiful rows, one on top of the other. Now we have to put away our white beads and take out the blue ones that will place that will be used to make the third row of an earring. So the third row is made exactly like the second. Again, it's decreasing, so first things first, we'll have to move to the second white bead of a row to be able to continue, like we've done before. So I'm in the first bead, move in the second with my needle that goes through towards the center. I won't be able to pass through the thread because there's the black bead, so I'll get the black bead as well, easier this way. Go inside the ring switch around my ring so that I'm on the other side and then I can go back through the two beads that I passed through now. Be careful with your black beads because the tension is tight so you'll have some difficulty going through. Don't break the bead please. Okay and we're in the second bead ready to start our third row. So again we will start the row since it's in decreasing mode with no sorry right now it's increasing because we've moved so two beads get the first bridge of thread between the third second and third bead of the row pass through pull and then go through the second bead that you've added to your work from the bottom with your thread coming out the outside here you go Again, we will work five or six beads. When you get to this point, you'll probably need a double bead. See you then. Okay, so I've added almost two thirds of my third row and I've gotten to a point where I need a double bead because as you can see, the last bead that I've added is really behind the thread to which I've added it. So I'll pick up another bead and again, attach it to this bridge like I've done with the last one. through the bead and pull and yep 
like this we've closed the gap and we're almost at the right placement to add the bead to the next bridge. Here you go. Pull through. Yep. Nice and tight. Now it's about having an eye for these things because brick stitch isn't a perfect technique. Whereas you won't know that if I've added a base of 30 beads, I'll have to add two beads. It fluctuates between how much tension you use, the actual size of your beads. Even if they're perfect Miyuki beads, they will have slightly different sizes. We're talking about the size that you won't even be able to tell the difference with the naked eye, but there is a slight difference. So you might need an extra bead or another. So it's all about, it's more an art than a math. So you'll have to make your eye working with it, with this technique to understand how many actual beads looks best. And it's just trial and error. So add an extra bead, see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, take it out, try again. And like that. So trial and error, it's how it works. So right now we'll finish off the last bead, the last row. We're almost done. Okay, so we finished off our third row and we've added two, so two double beads I've actually added. So in total we have 30 and that's perfect because we actually need an even number of beads for the third row to be able to start our fourth and final row. The fourth and final row is not made the same way as the others, but we will make only points. So every two beads you'll add a bead and it will make a small point, which looks really cute. And that is why you need an even number of beads, because otherwise, if they would be odd, you'd have a leftover bead at the end and it doesn't look any good. So, yes, we have 30 beads. So I made a little mistake because every 30 beads, when you ha add a base of 30 beads, you actually have 28 bridges. And once you add the two double beads to the next row, you go back to 30. So it's 30 beads for every row. And it's perfect because it's an even number. So we start off. Coming out of the last bead we've added for the third row, and that's perfect, no need to move. Add a bead, and then go through under the thread that goes between the first two beads of the previous row and through the bead that you've just added. And you see how it makes a pretty point, and it's normal that the thread is showing here. Unfortunately, there's no way to not have this showing. And you'll actually have a thread on each side of the bead because now we'll go through the second bead of the third row with your thread going towards the circle as I'm doing. And you see that you get a second thread on the outside of that bead. And it's absolutely normal, no way to go around it. So go back through the third bead and you see how I'm switching direction for my needle. Once again, you're with your thread towards the outside of the circle and you can add the second point. So new bead, Go through the bridge that you find in front of you. So we skipped actually a bridge. Go under and through out at the bead. Pull and you see how the thread is again showing, normal. Go through the fourth bead in this case. So we're actually going through each bead. Okay. And then, so I've finished off all my points and now I'm ready to close the thread. I've come in between two blue beads of the third row where there isn't a point. I pass under the thread that passes between the two beads. I'll have to make a half hitch knot. Go through the loop of the thread, pull. And you've made the knot. Then you have to hide your thread in between the beads. So move a few beads over, redo the knot and then you'll be ready to cut it off. So these earrings have a closure has have a closure that has to go through your hole in the ear. If you don't want them to stay like this, but you want them to face you on the sides of your th of your face, we can do that using some pliers. And I've done it like this. So you close the ring, take the pliers, flat pliers will do. Better if you have round pliers, actually. And 
then just make a loop to close them off. So, if you want these earrings to face you when you wear them on each side of your le of your face, then you can do that with pliers. So take your round pliers, take the hook that is open and round it around so that it closes with the earring already closed. Here you go. Okay. Make a nice round. Yeah, like that. And then you take a hook earring finding, open it up and hook it to the loop you've just made. And you've got an earring that fits just this way. So I've made the second earring so you can see how the two earrings will be facing you once you're wearing them. So this is just another trick to have different kinds of earrings. So you can make a pair like this and then the next pair facing the other way and it can be cute. As always, I remind you that you can find the kit with all the materials to make the earrings of the tutorial on our site, www.happybead.com. And also you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Our Facebook page is Happy Bead, La Fabrica delle Perline. And on Instagram, we're Happy Bead Milano. You can also click below to sign up to our page and our channel to always know when a new tutorial comes along. Thanks for watching. Take care.